And finally, new rules since so much of what passes for today's journalism is anything but. How about some rules for identifying actual news? For example, when an internet headline reads, you won't believe, yes you will, and no, it's not news. <laughs> when anyone is demanding an apology, unless they have hostages, that's not news. And when the offended group are identified as the internet, Twitter, or people, it's nobody. <laughs> I guarantee when you click on the story, you find out the internet is three losers with a combined Twitter following of their mom. <laughs> I, <laughs> I used to think something was news if a journalist reported it, but really I live in a world where it's news if Mariah Carey's tit flops out because Twitter will respond and then a journalist reports on the controversy. If a boob flops in the forest and no one is around to hear it, it doesn't make a sound. <laughs> but if three jackasses tweet about it, it's news. Here's an example from this week. This is a picture from the premiere of Red Sparrow, which looks pretty good, by the way. Jennifer Lawrence plays a beautiful woman who uses sex as a weapon on orders from Moscow. Its working title was I, Ivanka. <laughs> <laughs> you <laughs> way ahead of me. <laughs> anyway. Here's the headline from L Online and a hundred other sites. Jennifer Lawrence's latest Red Sparrow photo call has Twitter calling out gender inequality. Yes, see, see, because the men are wearing coats, but she's not. And even though that was her choice, someone with 11 followers didn't like it, so the story was reported in the New York Times, the Washington Post, New York Post, Fox News, BBC, Vanity Fair, Chicago Tribune, The Guardian, The National Review. Now, all these esteemed news organizations aren't saying they think it's a big deal because they're serious journalists. They'd rather be writing about Syria and the oceans dying. But oh, the humanity, Jennifer Lawrence didn't have a coat. Wrap her up! Wrap her up! <laughs> you know, this is not an outlier. This is a constant and prominent part of today's journalism, creating some bullshit non-issue that a few trolls will predictably go apeshit over, and then reporting on those unrepresentative tweets like all of America is talking about nothing else. Justin Timberlake used a projection of Prince for his Super Bowl halftime show, and people are furious. No, nobody cared. <laughs> People are really mad that Sean White dragged the American flag after he won the gold. No, not even a little, you fucking liars. <laughs> Weight Watchers is targeting teens, and Twitter is outraged. No, it isn't. It's the same three people. And it's not hard to find three people who are mad at anything. I could say good morning on Twitter, and three people would object. Good in your privileged world, Bill Maher. <laughs> No wonder fake news resonates so much with Trump fans, because so much of it is fake. Just nonsense made to keep you perpetually offended with an endless stream of controversies that aren't controversial and outrageous that aren't outrageous. Because places like the Huffington Post and BuzzFeed and Salon, they make their money by how many clicks they get. Yes, the people who see themselves as morally superior are actually ignoring their sacred job of informing citizens of what's important and instead sowing division for their own selfish ends. Hey, wait, isn't that what Russia was doing to us? <laughs> yeah, it is. And we have to stop both of them from using us as the cocks in their cockfights. And so I conclude by saying to all those who are barely able to go on after seeing Kendall Jenner tweet the wrong color emoji, <laughs> A bit of advice. If you don't like what Kendall did with a brown fist in her tweet, do not watch her sister's sex tape. 